I hope you have pictures of, uh, by the way, if Brother Enoch is there or Brother Joshua, please look for pictures of the crucifixion and there was darkness, okay? Just Google it. You can find that picture. Later, we're going to need that. Uh, our topic is about the coming solar eclipse. Uh, maybe some of you can Google it uh, for the coming solar eclipse this coming April 8th. So, okay, later you can use that picture. But I was hoping for a picture that shows the landscape and the uh, while it's getting dark. Okay, the Bible described that. In the crucifixion and in the Passover, there was darkness in the land. So this coming solar eclipse, can you look for that news? Any one of you can help out. Uh, please look for that news bit in this coming April 8th. This coming solar eclipse just around our corner, uh, one week away. What is our day today? 30. Uh, almost a week away, there will be a coming solar eclipse. So please look for that news. Uh, item, Brother Joshua, Parmenan, and Brother Simon, by Eli. Okay, that's a good that's a good picture. Uh, later, I'm gonna show that because uh, during the crucifixion, there might be an eclipse. It might even be a blood moon. Okay, so I could not memorize the events, but scientists have said. During his crucifixion, there was a dark, uh, there might have been an eclipse, but uh, the Bible states that there was darkness in the land. So we're going to show the picture. If there is uh, even other illustrations that shows the landscape getting dark. It happened also in Egypt. Okay. Uh, some of you could search for pictures of Egypt, even using your cell phone. If you just tilt your cell phone sideways, it, it can be shown here. So, uh, the, the darkness in Egypt, that's a Passover. The dark, of course, it was nighttime. So since, but was there a full moon? Uh, a new moon? Uh, no, sorry, if it's on the dark side, it's called a full moon. And uh, the time of Christ's crucifixion, it was an afternoon. When there was a darkness, that would be a solar eclipse. It's not a blood moon. Because Christ was crucifixion on the daytime. So uh, at evening, his body was already buried. So... Uh, it was a solar eclipse. Now let's show the outline first. Let's talk about the outline. I hope you familiarize yourself with the folder. I hope you show to add to other brethren the folder so they can help out in showing some pictures. Uh, please show the uh, outline, Brother Simon. I hope you ask questions also related to this topic. But please show the outline first, Brother Simon. Permanent, or is it brother or neck taking at the stage at, no? using the account of Permanent? Brother Simon, do you have the outline? Please uh, respond. Can you confirm if you have it or not? Hello, Brother Simon. Okay, that's it. Maybe you can stretch. I hope you can stretch that. Uh... So we have Roman number one, the blood moon. Roman number two, the eclipse. Roman number three, the typology of Brother Burnham. What's next? Is there not a, a Roman number four? No more. Okay, we'll go through this step by step. Uh, 
Let's go to the first Roman number. Let's read the... Let's go up, Brother Simon, to Roman number one. The, the review of the blood moon. Okay. Uh, please show the, th the thumbnail of the past. We talked about the blood moon. We talked about the spring and fall. Okay. You showed it a while ago, Brother Simon. Could you show that again? So everything about the blood moon. But right now, please... Uh, uh, please, uh, we're going to review. It. This was broadcasted earlier. Not this year. Last year. So could you show the thumbnail of the blood moon in spring and fall? So we're gonna get back to this outline later. So just uh, uh, just prepare yourself. Bermana can stretch the outline landscape. <laughs> this is portrait of the word, no? If you can make it into landscape, that would be better. This is spring and fall. Okay, you see the illustration. Uh, most of the uh, recent revelations that have been uh, revealed by God to our fellowship is the spring feasts and the fall feasts, its typology. There are lots of details. Of course, we're going if we're gonna witness to other message believers, it has to be the basic things that became advanced first. Before we talk about this detail, the de these are too detailed to directly jump into that. Except you have a regular uh outlet regular online outlet okay well, that's one blood moon that's another thumbnail thank you brother joshua then that is much much earlier this may be two years ago or three years ago the blood moon the significance of the blood moon now the the other one so you may close that brother joshua this might be two or three years ago 2001 okay so this is around a year ago uh, every spring every fall we talked about typologies of the feasts and uh, this year right now it is the spring and there's a coming solar eclipse now before we talk about that so could you stretch this uh, lengthwise so let's talk about the blood moon what is the blood moon uh, for, show the upper portion that's a good stretch okay that's the part we need okay uh, last time out we last year we shared that the blood moon is God's signature to point to spring and fall there is importance in God's creation. Of course, God's creation, there are four seasons. And mostly the blood moon would appear not in any time of the year except spring and fall. It is like God putting a red marker on these two seasons for us to take focus upon. Why in God's creation? You may, anyone can interrupt me for questions, okay? Why in God's creation would God put this blood moon on these two period of time? Because these two period of time is the birthday of Jesus Christ. You know, in God's creation, whether supernaturally or naturally, God gives us an indication of what we need to focus upon. Example, the first photograph. Maybe some of you can immediately look for that, the, uh, the, the shroud. The first photograph in the world is not the invention of man. It is a, the supernatural act of God. The first photograph was God's own son resurrecting. The resurrection, when you see the cross, don't just see the death or the curse. When you see the cross, think of the resurrection. 
So, the very first photograph in the world, can some of you look for the Shroud of Turin? Temporarily, show it. Okay. Blow it up, Brother, Sa Brother Joshua. Or stretch it out. Okay, or you cannot. Maybe make it lengthwise. Anyway, that's all right. So, the first photograph, you're looking at the negative. But because of new technology today, that negative can be, you can even um, use graphic, computer graphics, so that the face of Jesus Christ would appear with its different contours, not just uh, two-dimensional, uh, two third-dimensional. You can see his image in a third-dimensional form. You just Google it in YouTube, okay? You can see the image of Christ. Now, that is God's photograph of the resurrection of Christ because that image will not appear unless it's discovered by scientists. There is radiation or heat in order to imprint using the blood uh, and the plate, white platelets as chemicals. No, no one today can duplicate. Oh, that's good. Okay. No one can duplicate that... Uh, that image, even today, in today's modern technology, it's by chance, by accident, by uh, supernatural intervention that that photograph could be taken place because the body must emit light and heat radiation. So the, the blood, the white platelets would be imprinted on the cloth. And that would be invisible to the naked eye. Remember, during the time, they had no uh, technology. They could not see the image. They just see a cloth that is uh, with markings or not uh, with blurred images. But upon the invention of the photograph, they were able to see the details. So against the claim of others, Many other uh, no skeptics. Um, this photograph could not be duplicated by anyone today, even today, in our modern technology. How much more in the past where they where they did not even have photograph uh, technology. So this kind of photography, well, could only be done by God. And the first photography in the world was made by God. Through, and it is the photograph of his son resurrecting because that photograph would not be imprinted unless the body emits light. So uh, so before Christ's resurrection, it, show, it imprinted his body on the cloth. So that's supernatural. If that is the first photograph in the world, God shows us supernaturally. Brother Joshua, please close the picture. Now let's focus on the blood moon. It's no accident God gave the blood moon, not just pointing us to spring and fall. Spring and fall, fall are both the birthdays of Jesus Christ. Why are there two birthdays? There's a physical birthday and there's a spiritual birthday. Uh, to give you just a uh, an eye view, bird's eye view, if Christ's ministry was three and a half years, he started his ministry on his 30th year of age 30. Then his death is six months from his birth. You see that? So when is his birth? That is his, during his baptism the Feast of Tabernacles. That was one of our revelation on the Feast of Tabernacles, when God was tabernacled in man. Before, I just understood the tabernacles as making putting up tents in the desert. Long time ago when I was broadcasting the radio, I just read from Jewish uh, book or messianic books, the type of the tabernacles. But I now see the ultimate type of the tabernacles is God tabernacled in man. 
Jesus Christ is the tabernacle of God to man. And he was baptized in the River Jordan on his 30th birthday. That would be on the fall. The fall is not just the birth of Christ. The fall is also the time when the fullness of the Godhead indwelt in him bodily at his baptism in the River Jordan. So that, that fall is significant. It's a good thing it so happened the anniversary of the local church I'm ministering into for, uh, falls on autumn fall. So we can talk about, we can have seminars about those revelations. I hope you can invite the people today. So the summer is the harvest. The summer is in between that. And the other side, which you cannot see here, is the winter solstice. Later, we're, we're going to talk about that as the seasons. So the fall season, the fall equ uh, equinox. What is equinox? The, the light day's time and the night time are equal. So if you can, under you can imagine the earth rotating around the sun, uh, you'll understand equinox. Let me finish this illustration so we can show the other. So... The, what uh, the, God put the blood moon as a marker on the spring and fall. And why? There is something God wants us to see. It is significant. And it brings us to the spring and fall feasts. So uh, many Christians today don't talk about the feasts. But we're, we're not supposed to literally, physically... Uh, uh, implement, uh, do the feasts, except a modified form of the Passover unleavened bread, which is what we call today as communion. Okay? So, but other feasts are not to be uh, practiced literally, but you should get the type. Well, some of those practices you uh, it is already commanded by God to do any time we need, like praying in uh, contrition to God. Pray, yeah. Praying in contrition to God, putting on sackcloth, uh, having time of mourning for your sins. That's in the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Atonement. Okay, The Feast of Tabernacles, that is like a celebration. So I hope you can share this to your churches, what you can hear here. So that's significant for the fall. What is significant for the spring? That's the ultimate birthday of Jesus Christ. What kind of birthday? The resurrection. And when you celebrate the Passover and live and bread through communion, you're actually celebrating your birthday and the birthday, ultimate birthday of Jesus Christ. The physical birthday, and, and that includes the indwelling of the Spirit, the River Jordan, that is incomplete. That is just a stepping stone. The ultimate birthday is the spring. We are just reviewing, okay? Uh, if you're familiar, uh, I hope you can be familiar with this and share this to others. The fall represents our fallen nature. We were born to die. That's in the track of Communion 2006. That's why... He, Christ was born on the fall. How about the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the Feast of Tabernacles? We are still in our fallen nature when we receive the Spirit of God. And we were supposed to receive the Spirit of God as to be created in the image of God. So uh, during the fall, it is the birth of Christ and it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit to Christ. When you go to spring, that is the resurrection of Christ. And when we celebrate communion, we celebrate the Passover and living bread in a modified form today, we are celebrating, in essence, the birthday, ultimate birthday of Jesus Christ. So that's communion 2008, 2006. And we are also celebrating our birthday. If we would be with him in the resurrection, we are also celebrating our own birthdays. The ultimate birthday we should be celebrating 
is the resurrection. Our first birthday is tied to the first birth of Christ. It represents the fall. We can celebrate in a in with revelation. What do you mean revelation? Because it represents your death of through sin. Christ had no inherited sin, but he was born to die for our sins. We were born in with death hanging over our heads. That's why our own birthdays is akin to the fall feast because our first birth, like the birth of Jesus Christ, is has death. And you can use this as an existential question to many of our brethren. <coughs> While you are focused on work, you are focused on play, your children are not focus you have to share to your children you have we have to dedicate our lives to god to his message to his mystery otherwise you, your life has no meaning at all you're just here to eat live and die get married have children that's all grow old and die and so that's why many people hopeless people in the world they try to make do with their time to be happy while they're on earth because for them after death there's no they don't know what is next the bible says there's only the fearful thing of judgment so while you're alive our time here on earth is spelled here through this spring and fall also there is also summer and winter what is the type of that so our, our whole lives is here represented here by this mystery and god intends for us to hunger for him and if we hunger for him we hunger for his word then we hunger for his revelation we prove all things then god shows us why we live today we live today to prepare for the afterlife for eternity and this is part of that okay now let's uh show other illustrations of the blood moon how does blood moon come about? Or oh, you can rotate the pictures to blood moon. I'm not going to focus on the spring and fall. I've shown that here. So Brother Simon, Enoch, and others, please rotate. Okay. So how does blood moon exist? Maybe you can maximize that. Blood moon happens when... Do you know the difference between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse? Lunar eclipse is the moon is uh, overshadowed by the earth. A solar eclipse is the sun is overshadowed by the moon. It will give a limited shadow on earth, the solar eclipse. But the earth can completely cover the moon. Now, before the moon is completely covered, Sometimes the light of the sun passes through the atmosphere. And when there's the light of the sun passes through the atmosphere of the earth, the round the the corona, the, the surrounding atmosphere, when it hits the moon, it turns it blood red. There are times it is much more bloodier red than. Uh, than, uh, than other times, especially when it's much near. Uh, one uh, science journal says that sunset, or just rotate uh, all about blood moon, it's like sunset and sunrise, the twilight goes at the same time. And did you know when we talk about uh, Passover, that's the time. It's six o'clock in our time. Six o'clock in our time could be either sunset or sunrise. Just before sunrise. Okay. The uh, It's neither light or dark. It's neither light or day. Did you know that there's a scripture that talks about that? Zechariah 
chapter 14, neither light or day, but there shall be light in the evening time. Well, that will be in Romans number 3. Now, before we go to that, what does the blood moon represent? Do you, uh, just rotate to other pictures because uh, uh, the blood moon is... Uh, 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 there is also a type. The Bible mentions the sun shall be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. The, that terminology is a solar eclipse. The sackcloth sun. You see that in the illustration? Now, they call this the four tetrads of the blood moon during Passover and Tabernacles in 2014 and 2015. Okay. That's almost 10 years ago. And many are trying to predict the end of the world. But before you talk about the end of the world, because there's a cycle of this blood moon, let's talk about that its typology in the feasts. Now, we're not going to talk about the feasts because it's tackled in, in another video. Let's talk about the red, the bloody red moon. The Bible mentions that prophet, first prophecy in Joel, it's repeated in Acts. Then finally, in the book of Revelation, it will be mentioned. It represents what? Remember, what is the Passover? The Passover is the time in Egypt when God death angel passed through Egypt those that did not have the blood of the lamb splayed around the doorposts the child will die their chi children will die the firstborn starting from the firstborn of course when I say starting the rest of course it will be by because of parental practice the lesson there is the parents if the Israelites will not follow God's instruction, their children will die. God will kill their children. It doesn't matter if whether you're Egyptian or you're Israelite. If you don't follow the instruction given by God during the Passover and unleavened bread, of course, the unleavened bread is also the same day and a few other days later. But on the, on the time that they had the pas first Passover, they, they could not celebrate the seven days unleavened bread. It would only be in the in the promised land when they, they they could celebrate it again, Joshua. But before they celebrated it again in Joshua, they celebrated it first in Egypt and they left Egypt. And there was the 40 years. The 40 years that they were not able to enter the promised land. That's also what they call a Passover. So this is not the Passover of the angel or the times, 6 o'clock. This is a Passover or the Sabbath that we've passed over from death to life. This is the passing over in the desert, in transit, in going into the promised land. The promised land uh, is the final destination. It's the final destination. Uh, so... Between the two Passovers, it's like the Dark Ages. It's like really a Dark Ages because there are murmurings and complainings. That's why God he allowed the, uh, the majority of the Israelites to grow old and die, except for Joshua and Caleb. It's only the youth ministry, or we need to train our youth. <laughs> because if you don't train, there's no more next generation for this message, for... For, uh, no, for how to carry on with this message. We have to train our youth for the ministry. Only the youth were able, that youth of, of course grew up already. They, they became adults already when they entered the promised land. Their old men, their parents, their grandparents died. Even Moses died. Only Joshua and Caleb was able to enter because they lacked faith. So do not die while you are in transit. That means to say, while we are on earth, we are on a sojourn. 
we are sojourning on earth, we must not uh, stop along the way. We must stop, not stop being barren. We must not stop walking further light in progressive revelation. We must constantly be, we must grow in our barren maturity so that we can receive further deeper revelations from God, deeper, further deeper instructions from God, and we could be the light of, for the Gentiles, for the rest of the world. We would be the showcase of God's uh, glory before he closes out the curtain of this world. Now, the, the blood moon represents death because there was death in Egypt. There was also death in the time of Christ. And remember, God commanded every year for the Israelites to slaughter a lamb for the Passover. That's why it's blood moon. That's why the term is blood. They need the sacrifice of the blood. When we celebrate the yeast annual communion as commanded by the Bible, do this in remembrance of me. And Paul saying, let us keep the feast. Well, that should be uh, evidence enough for some skeptics that God really willed that we continue what Christ started, what Christ continued, what Moses started out. Okay. This Passover feast to unleavened bread, this is the perfect will of God is for us to know and practice and exercise. What should we be doing? There, it, the, there will be death in the land. Let's go directly to the tribulation period. In the tribulation period, if you can show some illustrations of the tribulation period, in the tribulation period, there will be death and destructions. For those who heeded not the gospel. Right now, so do, do you have an illustration of a tribulation period? Like, uh, you had a picture of that before. There will, there will rain death and destruction from the skies. Every volcano will explode. Every mountain will be thrown to the sea. That would mean tsunamis, right? There will be first a third that will die. Not just men, but fish of the sea and trees and many others then the light a third will have no light a third of the day and that will eventually from the trumpet judgments to the vile judgments there will be darkness for the whole world huh? for the whole world don't you have that illustration brother simon maybe rotate your other two other pictures may Okay, maybe look for the tribulation period. Okay, so some of you, I hope you can help out. Those who have computers, you can even use your cell phones. Okay, so brother JP, help out show, using your cell phone. Show the tribulation period. You can use pictures of our previous broadcasts. So don't just stick here to the four blood moons. This is similar to the other one. So the, in the tribulation period, there will be darkness. But before darkness comes, there will be a blood moon. It's a sign in heaven. It's God's warning. Today, people scoff at the future coming uh, apocalypse, for coming uh, cataclysm. People don't believe that anymore. They look at this on a scientific point of view that, oh, it's blood red because of the atmosphere. Uh, the sun's rays passing through the atmosphere. But... Um, it will come as it happened in Egypt, as it happened in time of Christ, there was darkness in the land. It will happen. The tribulation is right around our corner. Could you at least show the eternity to eternity? Oh, thank you. Maybe you, you want to use that? Okay. So I hope you can rotate uh, uh, you can rotate the pictures. You can rotate the pictures in uh, rotate the pictures of to other that shows the tribulation. During the tribulation, the earth will roll over. 
death and destruction will run, there will be darkness. But before the darkness, there the moon shall be turned to blood and the sun will not shine. The sun will be darkened. In the darkening of the sun, in the darkening of the sun, um, by the way, uh, I hope some of you could invite uh, uh, Brother Andrew Durano to listen. It's not because he's interested, but maybe he might listen. So he's commenting about the Passover or the communion. He, he's uh, contesting that. I'd like, like to invite him for a moment. Um, Brother, are you there? I can't hear you. Okay, do you have any question? I'm just yes, typing his name. I cannot be his name. I said earlier, <laughs> oh, wait, I'm going to share screen the... I'm going to share screen the picture I need to... Tribulation period. I've been asking for the tribulation period. Here, I have one like this. Okay, can you show the tribulation period? Okay, here. Wait. Okay, so I just sent him my, an invitation to listen. Okay, let's get back to the tribulation period. Do you have the illustration now? The church ages, uh, let's say the eternity to eternity, just for, for perspective. Because if you're just showing <laughs> just uh, pictures... They don't even know what the tribulation period is. At least our our broadcast could be understandable even to beginners. So please show like it even the eternity to eternity, the tribulation period. Maybe Brother Joshua, you can help out if Brother Simon is having a hard time. Okay, that thank you. That's one. And if you can show the chart of the tribulation period of eternity to eternity, that would be helpful. Even if you use uh two uh two screen sh share screens here so uh before it rains death and destruction there will be darkness that's a type of the solar eclipse so i'm getting ahead of myself in the third roman number three but uh, uh when i talked about the blood moon the bible talked about the blood moon when i broadcasted it before i mentioned that it forebodes the coming tribulation. Because what you read in Joel, of course, it took place in the past, still taking place today. It is God's reminder for us of that coming day. The coming day, one day, <laughs> the song, one day, of course, that seems to be a positive song, but one day, we need to make a song, <laughs> one day the earth will end about our present civilization the governments will change hands there will be a great cataclysm and this is what the blood moon forbodes it's not just the death of your child spiritually today of course our children are dying spiritually if you're not following instructions similar uh, typology from the Passover and living bread it's a type for the family uh, it's not mentioned as a family, but the hidden revelation is the family. When he commanded all members of the family should finish the roasted lamb, all members of the family should uh, take unleavened bread. From the night in Egypt and when they repeat it again in the promised land. And they do the Passover unleavened bread for seven days. It's a whole family affair. The children are not exempted. The parents will be very strict on that. So when they uh, insist that their wives and children participate, it is commanded by God. And there's a message for us, for the family. So there's a message of God for the family. And for the family, next, next is for the church. A, a group of believers, that's God's family. Okay, uh, can't you show the chart, eternity to eternity, the tribulation period? 
the last Daniel, Brother Joshua, Brother JP, you can use your cell phone and tilt the cell phone uh, lying on his side. Okay. So I hope some of you could help out there. So uh, let's continue on. That's the message about the blood moon. It, uh, it portends, uh, it brings to recollection what happened in Egypt. What happened in Egypt? The same thing you see here. There were hailstones. I'm talking about Egypt, huh? I'm not yet talking about the, uh, in, in, in the book of Revelation. The hailstones in Egypt, the ten plagues in Egypt, uh, foreshadow the coming events that will take place for the whole world. For the whole world. Not just in a local city or what. So if you see um, uh, movies about uh, Judgment Day or movies about the destruction of the cities or the earth, that's true. Scientists even expect an asteroid. We're overdue that an asteroid should strike us. I'm talking about a larger asteroid, an extinction-level event asteroid. So if if the book of Revelation mentions there will be fire, hail, mixed with blood, that's the type. Because today, if you don't want the blood of Christ, like it was in Egypt, the blood of the Lamb, if you don't want to apply it in your life, symbolically, through the Word, then God will still apply it with your own blood. You will make, be made to drink with your own blood. There will be World War III that you'll be killing each other. And at the same time, God will intervene, interrupt World War III by this dreadful day of the Lord. Okay, that's the foreboding. That's the type of what we mentioned in the blood moon. Okay? Sign in heaven. Okay, let's go to the eclipses. Let's go to the second outline. I hope you were able to rotate all the pictures about the blood moon. And I was asking for the eternity to eternity. Before JP, you were able, you were able to show that. But I hope uh, maybe some of your father and mother is listening so they will remind you to look for that. Okay. The eternity to eternity. Because before you had the general purpose folder, you can bring it out anytime. Brother Joshua also, you're, you were able to bring it out when I asked about that. This is a solar eclipse. Okay, thank you. Who brought it out? Brother Simon. Uh, I hope you can help out, okay? Brother JP, Brother Joshua. And who, whoever who wish to train their children. Uh, train. You, even, you can even use your cell phone, please, the Ruth. Um, this is the tribulation period. You can see there's a little darkness there in the Great Tribulation. I'm talking about the dreadful day of the Lord, the 30 days extra before Armageddon. So they were about to go to war, World War III, and God will interrupt them. So suddenly there, the, the, there will be a brownout. <laughs> suddenly the lights go off. That's not the light of electricity. It's the light of the sun. Of course, there's a night time, there's a daytime. But suddenly every the whole world became to darkness. That's in the vials, Revelation chapter 16. So when you re see there Armageddon in the right side, before they will finish their war, <laughs> God will interrupt their war and it will be, so what light you can see will be fires in brimstone and mingled with blood. Because many will be will die. It will not they who will be killing each other. It will be Christ and his armies. This time Christ is no longer the lamb. He's a lion. A conquering lion. So it will be Christ who will be killed. Those for Second Thessalonians 1 8. Those who are disobedient. Who who know not God and who obey not the gospel. So when you say obey, we need to give the message to others. And those others who obey not the gospel, 
uh, who heed not this call, they they are the ones that will be killed by Christ, and even the Antichrist, the leader of the world. Then, of course, ordinary people can be Antichrists, but the major leader, there's a major leader that leads the people in deception. He will be killed by Christ. Uh, First Thessalonians one, it will be whom God God will destroy by the 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 with fire. Okay. In his, in his coming. There's a second coming. So that is what the blood moon represented. And that is what the solar eclipse represented. Okay. Now before we get ahead of ourselves. There's also in the church ages. Let's talk about here right now in the church ages. Could you show the church ages since you are here, Brother Simon? Could you show the church ages? So I hope uh, others could review the other... Others could review the other uh, other pictures, okay, to prepare yourselves to help out. Brother Simon, could you move it to the church ages? And this eternity to eternity. If you're having difficulty, uh, okay, let's get back to the eclipse. Show the outline. I hope you can ask your father to teach you how to landscape. Oh, that's the church ages. Okay, I, we're getting ahead of ourselves because it will take him too long to show the outline. Here, the seven church ages, there is also foreshadowed by this, what we call eclipse. Eclipse. The cell phone number in the <laughs> illustration no longer exists. Oh, I hope anyone can ask for that number. <laughs> I paid for that number. Uh, Brother Joshua, if you wish to show the eternity later, because <laughs> you are not late. So maybe you can show in Egypt, okay? Anyway, here the church ages is foreshadowed by the eclipse. Uh, by the way, Brother Simon, do you have a screenshot of Brother Branham's... Uh, the church age book, it's not, it's not Brother Branham. It was Lee Vale who took a picture about the uh, lunar eclipse the lunar eclipse uh, uh, when the pope visited jerusalem if if you don't have it i asked about for that maybe someone can search for that brother joshua uh even brother magellan brother jp please help out please search for the loon the illustration of lee vale in the church age booklet about the lunar eclipse when the pope visited jerusalem so just type church age booklet lunar eclipse picture okay the search for that in google i'm afraid it was not prepared okay i specifically asked for that um so please search for it right now brother joshua brother jp uh, help out even if you buy cell phone you can okay. use that to look for it okay that's the uh, this is another i'm not the i'm not asking for the drawing i'm asking for the maybe do you have an illustration brother simon of lee vale taking showing it's this is not the a physical drawing i'm talking about the uh i'm talking about the Actual picture of a lunar eclipse. It's in the church age booklet. If you have a church age booklet, Brother, brother uh, Menon said that he had the booklet and he had the picture there. Maybe some of you, Brother Enoch, maybe you can screenshot the picture from the booklet. Okay? And show it here. Uh, I, I requested that to be screenshot. If it was not screenshot, maybe you can do it right now. If not, maybe some of you can look for it in the internet. Okay, help out, help out, because our office is not perfect. So, uh, JP is gone. Uh, Brother Joshua, can you help out? Search for that. Church age booklet, uh, picture of lunar eclipse. Uh, so uh, Later, I'm going to use this picture. And this is the type of the eclipse. Okay. So... We're getting ahead of ourselves. We need the Roman number two in that outline. 
uh, why did God give a solar eclipse? There's a lunar eclipse, there's a solar eclipse. There's a difference between the two. The solar eclipse, the sun is directly shining on the earth, uh, except for a few moments that the moon will cover it up. But before it covers it up, okay, that's the solar eclipse. And on the other side, when the moon is on the other side, on the night side, the moon will shine the light of the sun. It's a type between the sun and the moon, right? And if the moon will shine the light of the sun and passes through the earth's shadow, the, the moon will have an eclipse. Okay, this is an illustration of a full moon and the partial eclipse and the total eclipse. Before it goes blood red, uh, sorry, sorry, before it goes black, before it goes black, it turns blood red. I see the, here in the illustration, this is what I was talking about. The atmosphere of the earth turns the moon red. So the moon is completely under the shadow of the earth. But because there's an atmosphere of the earth, the moon, because there's an atmosphere of the earth, the the uh the dust particles will turn will give a red hue on the moon it will not be quite light it will be red light it's like darkness and aside from darkness what you see is blood red the more dust on the earth the more bloodier it gets and remember in the tribulation period when the volcanoes will erupt there will be more dusts in the atmosphere and you cannot breathe. Imagine that. Tell that to your children. Do you want to do you do you want to be inside a burning building? You're not gonna die from the fire, but you're gonna die from the smoke. You cannot breathe. And one day the whole earth will experience that. And when the dust particles in the atmosphere is too much then the moon the bloodier red the moon will get the moon will get more bloodier red in its color it might literally be like the color of your blood i'm talking of in the tribulation period right now you see the blood moon not as worse yet as when there will be volcanic eruptions it is a warning let me say some people are dying today because of disobedience. But you can still come to Christ. Because that's a foreboding. That's a warning. There's a message behind it. It's both salvation and destruction. If you reject him, you don't follow instructions, you don't want to obey him, then death and destruction uh, is your, the counterpart of that. But if you obey him, there is salvation. The blood of the lamb applies to you. The blood moon, the red blood, the bloody red moon represents either your own blood or the blood of Jesus Christ covering your sins. Now, um, so before, let's go back to the lunar eclipse. Let's differentiate a lunar eclipse from a solar eclipse. Uh, could you show the lunar eclipse, the stages of the lunar eclipse? So th if there's a lunar eclipse, it's not, it's not necessarily a blood moon. Could you show the lunar eclipse, a stages of the lunar eclipse? There's the half moon, there's the quarter moon. If you don't have that, okay, maybe we can use this. But if you have other illustrations, please show that. The half, okay, that's one. Maybe you can blow that up. That's good. That's a better illustration. But please blow that up. Uh, do you have other illustrations on the landscape form? Oh, okay. Okay, let's move. Okay, you okay, that's good. If you could stretch it from left to right. Just focus on the, let, uh, just focus on, oh, that's another. Okay. So there's a blood moon and there's, but 
a lunar eclipse does not necessarily have to be a blood moon. When the when the shadow of the earth uh, overshadows the moon, e even the atmosphere, be well beyond the atmosphere, the moon will turn black. That is when the scripture says there will be darkness in the land. There is that uh, if it's night time, only the moon is showing light. But if the moon is in a total eclipse, see, let's see the illustration here at left. Uh, maybe close your share screen, Brother Joshua, because the total darkness there is only partial. Let's show. Let's let's ma blow up this this the size of this picture. Please bring it up to a while ago. Please blow it up. Then show. I'm gonna point. Why did you close it? <laughs> okay. Okay, that this is better. Okay, this this is better. Uh, look at this. The new moon. This is total darkness. The blood moon is not always happening every year. But every year there will be a total eclipse. There will be a solar eclipse, there will be a lunar eclipse. Each part of the year, uh, uh, in the whole year, each year, whatever, part, some part of the year, especially in spring and fall. I hope you can research that, okay? Full moon, new moon. New moon because it's all, all totally black. Full moon because all of the moon is illuminated by the sun. Let's talk about the partial illumination. We have the waxing crescent, the first quarter, the waxing gibbous, the waning gibbous, the last quarter, the waning crescent. Let us recall some types. Did you know that after winter comes the spring and the spring is thawing out the ice before it goes to the summer? It's very hot. From summer, before it goes to winter, it passes through the fall. The fall and the spring are almost the same, except that in spring, they're thawing out from the winter. But in the fall, they're starting to get cold. The trees starts to get die, uh, uh, to temporarily die, of course, to go to sleep. That's why the leaves are falling. And what does that represent? Some... Uh, one is coming through, one is passing out. Look at this uh, face of the moon. So disregarding first the, the total darkness or the total and the total full moon, the full light of the moon, there is the partial, gradual darkening of the moon. The partial darkening of the moon and gradually the darkness is dis disappearing. What do you know what this represents? It represents it represents of course a lot of things, but we're gonna focus today in the rest in the apostasy and restoration of the word. I I made a track. Uh there's a drawing of darkness going to light. Uh, please look for the picture of the restoration chart. Joshua, JP, or Ma Simon. What is the typology of this darkening and going to, going back to light? Uh, please show the track of the restoration. Okay, thank you. If you see in the right side, you can blow it up further. <laughs> Maximize it further because... Uh, Focus on the dark side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You see there, uh, before you go for show the black dark side, show the apostolic time. Go go higher up, up above. Go higher. Move your... Uh, okay. You see that? During the apostolic time, while the apostles were still alive, Paul was still alive. 
there were already uh, impending heresies. You know that because of history, there are lots of splintered understanding about Christ. Some are, there are partial truths. Some truths are more than the others. Some errors are more than the other. But while the apostles were alive, they could not penetrate the church. But after the apostles died, they were able to penetrate the church and there was darkness. Darkness from what? The original apostolic doctrines. And from that darkness, of course, uh, here in our illustration, it's suddenly, <laughs> it's, it's a sudden darkness. But if you go through history, there are many events. It was first about the Godhead, the Trinity was developed in baptism. After that, there are many other doctrines that was muddled up, darkened, okay, apostatized. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 4. In the last days, there shall come a falling away. Okay, some will teach, forbid to marry, forbid to, to eat certain things. That's apostasy. And it happened in history. There was a change in doctrines and practices of the church. From being Beren, they became Nicolaitan. And there came again the light. So in the 1500s, the light of the, the uh, some of the light of the gospel shone back through the instruments of God. Uh, one of his star messengers, Martin Luther. Let me comment something. Some end time preachers uh, uh, put down Martin Luther because they only want to exalt Brother Branham. Let me tell you, Martin Luther, John Wesley, Barry Branham, they, they are on the same boat, on the same on the ministry. They're just part of what we call progressive revelation. It's like Abraham. Uh, he doesn't know our revelation, but he is, because he did his part during his time, he was absolute in his time, uh, Abraham, Moses, but they didn't understand the level of understanding we had. So to the end time preachers who, who try to uh, absolute only Brother Branham and put down Martin Luther just because in this presumption that Brother Branham has all the light. Uh, could you show the, the lower part again, as you shown a while ago, the lower part? It's not yet finished. Until you're resurrected, it's not yet finished. Arise, shine, for the light is come. Isaiah 66 or 61. That, that, that will ultimately be the resurrection. Right now, we're still in our mortal bodies. Even though the progressive revelations of God are flooding us here in the end times, as Daniel 12, 4 said, the knowledge shall increase. Not just the knowledge of technology of men, or history, archaeology, or science and astronomy, biology, but the knowledge of the Lord will increase. And it's too many for us to discuss. Unless you're Berean, unless you're matured Berean, you cannot be perfected with it. No one can finish it, even in our lifetime. How much more when we are glorified? But of course, after we are glorified, I believe our understanding will be speeded up. So what if someone understands deeper than the others? In the time of Abraham, in the time of Martin Luther, in the time of Brother Branham, there we're all brethren, we're all in the same boat, we're all walking in the light, and God will justify us if we're walking in the light. That's the message of Martin Luther, justification by faith. So you notice the darkness is gradually disappearing. But on the other side, before it became black, it gradually became black. If you look at history, I just could not show it here in the track. What I can show here in the track is the restoration. So there is a time of falling away, going black, becoming black, be becoming darkened. 
And there will be a time where this darkness will gradually, it is gradual, it's not instant, gradually be enlightened again. And the Bible has many scriptures about that. The evening time there shall be light. It will come a day, neither light or day. Neither light or day because in the tribulation period when the volcanoes erupt, uh, before that, the total darkness, the balloon will turn blood red because of the atmospheric dust. If you can research, the more atmospheric dust, the more bloodier red the moon would be. And if it's over, fully overshadowed by the earth, it will turn total black. It will say total eclipse. There are two sides of that. What will happen on the world and what is happening to the church. What will, is happening on the earth will also be experienced by the Israelites. The Israelites will have their version of the eclipse. I'm not talking of literal eclipse, but there will be literal eclipse. There will be spiritual eclipse. We have our spiritual eclipse here in the church ages. There is darkening and there's enlightening. The Israelites in the tribulation period will have it worse. But they will have their own restoration because the Israelites also apostatized, fell away, backslid, and the Israelites will also be restored. So all Israel will be saved, Romans chapter 11, verse 26. Temporarily, 25, verse 25, Romans 11, 25, blindness in part is happened to Israel. So when you read that blindness, that means it's dark. What did Christ say? I will take your candlestick out of its place. What if you suddenly put out the fire of the candlestick inside the temple? It will turn dark. Of course, they, they have uh, fluorescent electricity then. They rely on the light of the candlestick. When you close it out, suddenly the room of the temple will turn dark. That's what Christ meant when he said, I will take the candlestick out of its place because he will move the candlestick to another age. As the Israelites lost the light and it came, went to the Gentile church, it will, also, of course, go back again to the Israelites. That's also the type of the blood moon or and uh, the Passover moon. Of course, I believe during the Passover of the time of Moses, it happened. The death of the Passover and the death of Christ, it happened. And it will happen. It's happening today. It's happening. It will happen much worse in the tribulation. And that's for the Israelites are concerned. The, the feast that they're celebrating, eventually they will experience it, what happened to Egypt, before they come to see Christ again. He will come and save you. There's, there's a scripture for that in Isaiah. And there's a song I like to hear about from Bob Fitz. He will come and save you. Speak to those that are broken hearted. Do not be afraid. Okay, the, imagine the tribulation period. Right now, we also need to be afraid. If you want to, if you, if you don't want to be left behind, it's a fearful thing to be left behind the rapture. You need to be bereaved right now. You don't want that to happen in your life for your children. So parents, constantly remind your children with this. Okay? Of course, you see the light coming from destruction of fire. But otherwise, it will be total darkness. Imagine groping in the dark. What about electricity? Is it the earth producing electricity? For total darkness to happen, I believe there will be an EMP. Would you show the earth uh, from space? Like there is some uh, lighting <laughs> in the dark side of the, of the earth. There are lights of the cities. The, I, I believe you showed that picture a while ago. Maybe you can look for that picture again. Brother Simon, what is an EMP? You look at this destruction. I believe there will be an e What is an EMP? An EMP is a nuclear explosion that produced waves. The way the EMP does not necessarily have to come from a nuclear blast. Although I believe maybe there might be some nuclear blast, partial nuclear blasts of the nations before Christ intervenes. An EMP, electromagnetic pulse, can also come from the sun. It could also come from space. The gamma rays, the cosmic rays. 
from the sun, it's called a solar emission. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, CME, coronal mass ejection. And more other than that, there's what we call the solar flares. Those are all da dangerous. Those are more hotter than what you see here in ordinary fire. And those at all at the same time, it will darken the electrified. So you will never, oh, that's a nuclear blast, okay? But can only a man-made weapons do that? No. God, through his asteroid, can do that. So combine all these cosmic rays, this uh, gamma rays, these uh, gamma ray bursts, coronal mass ejections, solar flares. Scientists were already talking about that. And we're unprepared for that. If it happens suddenly, we'll be thrown back into the dark ages. It will literally be dark. So we're not talking about the 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 side of the earth turned toward the sun. We're talking about will still will there still be electricity during the tribulation? If today you hate the brownouts, it's very uncomfortable. It will be much more terrible. You will be much more miserable then. So I hope. And that is what is being portended by these eclipses and the blood moon. The blood moon will not turn bloody red if the atmosphere, the atmospheric dust uh, uh, become too much. The, the gradient or the, the volume of the dust per cubic meter per cubic centimeter becomes too much to the point you will suffocate. You, you cannot even breathe. It will be, if it, you will have a hard time breathing. Here in the Philippines, we, we had Pinatubo in the 1990s. Even if it was daytime, it was noontime, there was darkness. It was like as night because of the darkness. Aside from the fact it will turn the blood moon red if, it, if, if the light of the sun still passes through the atmosphere of the earth. And if it passes through the total shadow, it will turn totally black. Could you go back to the eclipses, total eclipses, Brother Simon? So what does it represent? By the way, I was asking for the church age, uh, uh, illustration of church age. If none of you will look for it for look it up for me, I'm going to look it up for myself. Uh, I'm looking for the church age. Uh, let me type it here. Church age booklet. Uh, eclipse. Moon eclipse picture. Please search for it as I've dictated to you. I'm typing it right now. I hope you're helping me out so that our time could be saved. Uh, because I asked for that earlier. Okay, you should know that. Uh, Church Age booklet, Moon Eclipse picture. Okay, so. Uh, seven. Leeville. Leeville. Okay, I cannot find it. Oh, I, I, it will take me a long time to find it. I hope you can look for it. At least try to look for it. You should be doing that by yourselves. You should do that for yourselves. Okay. Um, well, let, uh, maybe you can show right now, uh, Brother Simon. Uh, so that, so okay, maybe you can see even though I did search it and did that, I can see it. By the way, uh, was there an early preparation by your father of that kind of picture? The, uh, the no, not really, that. because it's not on the... But the end of, if you're listening, please uh, look for the booklet and look for the picture then and screenshot it, okay? I think it's least, only for your additional pictures, but I didn't see it on the outline and... Yeah, you, you should have some coordination. So, uh, if you have a church age booklet, you open it up. Then there is a picture 
there of the lunar eclipse. And Brother Leville, I think, explained that Brother Branham preached that when the Pope visited Jerusalem in somewhere in 1960s, there was an eclipse. And they took picture of the eclipse. And that is where Brother Branham used that eclipse to show the church ages. So let's uh, move from the illustration again to the church age. Go to back. Go back to the drawing of the booklet uh, drawing. If you don't have the actual picture, maybe you can do it on your homes. Okay, look for it. There's an actual picture of the eclipse during the 1960s. Okay, and Brother Branham used that to to draw the darkening of the circle. <coughs> the darkening of the circle is the same topic he was talking about. What I showed earlier. The apostolic doctrine is being um, the apostolic doctrine is being overshadowed by darkness. The light of the moon means you're not on the day side; you're on the night side. You're on the night side. The, your only light is the light of the moon, and even the light of the moon is being covered up with an eclipse. There's a message about that. Uh, Brother Simon, please show the church age uh, drawing of the circles and menorah why you show that well, from the church age booklet because the the drawing of that's an illustration by brother leveil but uh but 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 Branham even had his own drawing i send you i think so i think Branham even had his own drawing about the shading of the darkness of the circle but the the design of level is enough. Could you do that? Okay, thank you, thank you for that. So blow it up further, blow it up further. So with the spaces visa okay. Focus on that. Okay, thank you, thank you. So you saw here, you see here. This is where they get the darkening of the circles. Uh Brother Branham saw uh heard about the eclipse when the Pope visited Jerusalem in the 1960s and of course Lee will put a picture of that in of the lunar eclipse in the church age booklet uh, but we'll just content ourselves with this picture so the darkness you see here in Ephesus the darkness started to to rise up uh, this shows the uh, darkening of the world so the Christ Christianity was still pure and suddenly heresies entered into Christianity. So there's like the full moon, the, the new moon, like the half moon, the quarter moon. Okay, what does it mean? There's a gradual darkening, but there's also a gradual lightening. But I, I shared that to Barlito. But there is no illustration here. But I, uh, at least I showed the illustration of the box. There's a lightning. But here in Brother Brandon's illustration, there's a little light in Laodicea. Uh, there's uh, mo much more light in Philadelphia. Because that's a brotherly love. But it shows the world. Uh, when you see here, it, uh, Brother Brandon is representing the darkness of the world. Majority of the world. In, the, in Ephesus, majority of the Christians are full of light here in Laodicea majority of the Christians are full of darkness of course the extent of the truth you know is not the basis it the basis is your Berean spirit then you will be justified what is the Berean spirit you want to walk in the light you repented from ignorance so you have will have an hum, a humble attitude to listen and learn. You will not have a haughty spirit to put on others. First and foremost, you want to learn for yourself. You want to apply it to your family and your church before you witness to others. Others who are haughty, who are proud, proud, full of pride, who are prejudicial to others, biased, discriminatory, bigots, no? having bigotry, they, they, they don't want to learn from others. They only want to share. <laughs> they only want to preach because they think uh, they know they're better than others. Okay? 
they're holier than others. Uh, they, they know more than the others. So they would not want to listen to others. So the Berean will benefit. The Berean will ask questions from the Nicolaitans to know for the information. The Nicolaitans are at the losing end because they don't, they're not willing to listen to others. That's why the earth is darkened, is darkened, starting from Columba, Luther. The darkness is majority. It's the, the period of time, what we call the dark ages. The dark ages. So um, let's move on to the solar eclipse. What does the solar eclipse represent? Remember, when we talk about lunar eclipse, it's nighttime. And at, at night, at evening, there shall be light. That's Zechariah 14. It shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. Okay. Uh, the evening time, that's darkness. But suddenly light flashes through the darkness. Let's talk about the lightning. There shall be lightnings, thunderings, and voices. In other sermons, I explained that when there, when it is dark, full of darkness, there's no moonlight, and there's the lightning, that's a very, very, very temporary light. It will shine for a split second. And if you need to light your way, you don't have a light, okay? You don't have a lamp. There's no lamp posts. There's no even uh, torches. So there's no moonlight. There's no starlight. When there was a temporary lightning that flashed through the sky, suddenly all your place lights up for a split second. You have to memorize what, where you're walking, where your destiny is, where the pit is, so you can navigate your way safely to where you're going. Or if you, even if you're driving a car, you, uh, your, your tail lights, your headlights are busted <laughs> and you don't have any, or you, uh, even if you're riding a cart, <laughs> let's say you don't have a car. If there's no moonlight, starlight, you're re you're relying on the lightning, the light of a thunder strike. <laughs> the light of the thunder strike, of course, thunder is the voice. There will be some sound of the thunder. But the lightning is just the light. There's no thunder yet. Lightning comes before the thunder. So I don't, I must not take too long on this. But I'm showing about the light. I'm talking about the light. The lightning is a very, very short light. This age, Laodicea, is the shortest age compared to the others. And in this age, the light, especially the fullness of light. I can say before we are, uh, before we are here in the, before we are in the, our time ends. Before our times ends, I would say, before our times ends, we will experience the fullness of the light. Um, Romans eleven twelve, blindness in part, uh, eleven twenty five, blindness in part, which happened to Israel. Blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in okay so the light now so the fullness of light the fullness of light is the revelation i'm talking about the highest level of revelation of course if you're better and all the uh, misconception, misunderstanding, and kinks in the errors, in the message or in the apostolic understanding of the apostolic doctrine would have been ironed out. Communion, the original form of communion, Godhead, baptism, original sin, and many others, the basic things. Then you, you are genuinely uh, the, the perfect person 
uh, the a perfect situation and perfect condition to receive further light. Because others, if you grow deeper in some other topics, but you have not ironed out your basic foundational truths, you're incomplete. But uh, a mature Berean eventually will be, uh, most of them will be given a chance to be restored in the the, the old truths, uh, things old, uh, the past truths. Then you can receive fresh truths, the new things, okay, the the hidden things, the old things are the past things, okay, those, those are the old revelations that was lost through this darkness, when the light is restored, then there will be further light, like the sun shines seven times its brightness, you will receive the most highest form of revelation, even Israelites would not could not reach because in our time, only in our time, will this will this will there come in our time this overflowing of revelations, overflowing of revelations that even we could not even finish up. That's why we need as a if as a true believer today, we we it's like uh, hurriedly trying to gather the fishes. While, while there is the abundance of fishes, while the, while the Christ is with us in the form of the Word, let's celebrate. Let's not fast. <laughs> let's feast. Let's feast upon the fullness, the overflowing revelations of His Word. And, and you can only do that by being barren because it will not come from a singular source. It will come from many sources. And you can separate one from the other until you reach the the front line of the most present truth, the most recent revelations. Okay, so let's talk about the solar eclipse. I missed that part. We have uh, less than 20 minutes to go. So uh, I hope you can play... Gary Chapman's uh, The Light Inside, okay? Um, let's go to the solar eclipse. That illustration will be another form of illustration like, oh, Brother Jackson had a contender. I, I wish we had prepared for that. There's a contender beginning to the end. It's called sun, Sunrise Sunset. Did you search for that kind of contender? I hope you can share that kind of illustration. What what am I talking about? If there's a lunar eclipse, there's a solar eclipse. The lunar eclipse, it you are on the time. You're looking at the moon for light or the starlight. But in the daytime, it's only the sun that's showing its light. So there is a travel, there's a temporary darkness of the sun through what we call a solar eclipse. Could you show the solar eclipse, Brother Simon? Our time is almost running out, so uh, please hurry up. Okay, thank you. It's a solar eclipse. You see the corona, corona, the surrounding light. The corona, of course, doesn't only mean light, okay? The corona means the surrounding. When you say you have a crown, it's round <laughs> that covers the, sur the round of your head. Now, um... So what does it mean? So the, the opposite side represents the church ages. Uh, Israel has its, has its own version. What does this mean? This means, so for a while ago, I showed the circle and Brother Barnum was uh, saying it represents the earth, the people of the earth. And what about the bride? The bride, all the church ages, they will be could someone look for a tender? Uh, I'm going to look for it for myself. Some of you should help me search it out. Brother Joshua, Brother JP, Brother Beverly, Brother Enoch. Okay, if you're there. Or Sister Ellie. Uh, what am I looking for? A, the contender that talks about the... Uh, the contender that shows an illustration of 
uh, another form of uh, the, the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun, just as there is the rising of the moon and the setting of the moon. Sunrise, sunset. Sunrise, sunset. So I hope it show. I can find that picture. It's good to show it here while we still have the broadcast. Okay. So I hope you can search it, the content there. <coughs> okay, so um, I can't find it, so I hope you can find it for me. Okay, so uh, Please, uh, if you if you're gonna look for it, type the contender uh, images, the contender images, and look for the sunrise sunset images. Okay, we cannot find it. So, going back to our discussion, uh, let could you rotate the pictures of the blood moon? Ah, uh, sorry, that's all. So that's. Is that your picture of the solar eclipse? Do you have any other pictures? Could you show the picture about the the movement of uh, the moon uh, on the day side, on the uh, on the light side of the Earth? A while ago, you showed that a while ago before. Now let me give some type of this. No, no, that not that. Okay, wait, maybe you can use this. We can use this, okay? Imagine the moon is turning around. You're on the day side, huh? You're not on the night side. In the day side, there will be a, the, there will be a partial eclipse, then a total eclipse. When it total, there's a total eclipse, part of the earth, there will be darkness shown on the earth. And as the, and as the Earth moves around the Sun and the Moon along with it, there will be a path of darkness on the Earth during this solar eclipse. And when there was darkness in the land at the time of Christ, remember that during the crucifixion of Christ it was daytime. It was in the afternoon. The sun the sun is still shining on the Earth. It's not yet setting. So suddenly there was darkness upon his death. I don't know in his resurrection if there was darkness. There might be, no. But uh, in uh, but I believe it was during his death there was suddenly darkness. It was the Bible described it so. What about the book of Revelation? The sun shall be darkened. There will be a longer period of darkness. Remember, if when in the New Year, when you hear the firecrackers uh, exploding, when you reach 12 midnight, everyone will throw off their firecrackers exploding at the same time. Suddenly, you will hear a loud explosion. It's like that. During the tribulation, you will hear destruction. And when it suddenly turns dark, suddenly God turns off the light. <laughs> Then there will be a dreadful, there will be an earthquake that like the, the ground you're stepping on will be like uh, quicksand. <laughs> it will be like the waves of the sea. You have illustration. So that will be the description of the destruction then. So what does that mean? Well, it, in the tribulation period, the, the, the solar eclipse eclipse from the sun the moon eclipsing something will happen on the earth let's talk about the bride like the counterpart of the church ages there's the light in the beginning before there was darkness there was light in the beginning and there was light in the end so before the total solar eclipse could you do you have an illustrations of the solar eclipse 
like the faces or do you have the video of the solar eclipse um gradually the sun is being darkened so that means to say the church ages receives light but there is darkness in the middle but there is a restoration so the illustration i showed it's not the drawing of brother branham it's the drawing i had light and light it started with light it will end in light and the other side it's full of uh there's a new moon and the there's the new moon and what they call this the the full moon there's the end in darkness okay so the full moon of course uh represents this to total solar eclipse the new moon is on the other side the night side so both in the church ages both travel the night side and the day side are both traveling and for the as for the bride compared for the whole church for the bride they have a travel there was light and there was apostasy and there was restoration and there was light how about the other side there was new uh, light of of the new moon or the full moon then that there there will be an eclipse so while there will be an eclipse the moon gradually will be darkened and eventually before it black it becomes uh, a red blood red moon the turn will turn the moon will turn to blood before it backs out so it represents what will happen on the earth it represents the church ages for those that are unsaved for the for the church churchism the churchianity the christianity as a whole as when you say as a whole everyone that's called christians everyone who mentioned uses the name of christ okay you can rotate other pictures that you have not used we have less than 10 minutes to go uh maybe some of you wish to ask some questions rotate all uh, continue rotating the picture be because we're about to end so brother simon brother no, joshua so there are many, I, know, I know there are many pictures so at least you show it here before it ends any questions brother magellan oh Barger is not here brother menon Brother Enoch, maybe have some questions. It Me, brother, I have a question. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, what you said earlier is that on the Passover, it is uh, red blood moon, I think. Yes. Does could, you tell really... your, could you tell your household not to be noisy there? You okay. tell them the noise. The noi uh, don't don't my, speak uh, louder. I... But, they, they should be listening to the broadcast, tell them. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. They should be I'm listening to the that. broadcast. Do not speak very loud, okay? Okay. So, okay. My question is all about you, 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 you should be asking your toddler, Theo. Okay. okay. What okay. is your you question again? Be... Okay. My question is all about the Passover. When they are partaking the Passover, like, they are uh, praying because they're... they're, they're, they're child will will die if they don't pray and they don't have the blood on their doorpost is it really a red blood moon or there is an eclipse on that time i did i didn't say that for definitively i just said it might be and it's most likely why because children are dying because they didn't have the blood of the lamb in their door doorposts they didn't follow but, instructions. But the main they, point is that is it really a not, blood moon or an having a blood moon exists? Blood moon exists during springtime, during the spring equinox or near the spring equinox. And Passover is very close to that spring equinox. It could be earlier, it could be later, just like when we start with our unleavened bread. Uh, the, you can start earlier you can start later you can do both sides of the aisle of the passover 
So sometimes the blood moon is earlier than Nissan 14 or much later than Nissan 14. So, um, but the, the blood moon really exists. It, it portends that the blood, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, there was creation, there is salvation. And there's progressive revelation. If you walk in light, as is in light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin, and we have fellowship with one another. So how does the blood apply to us if we walk in the light? The progressive walk in the light is represented by the movement of the moon, the movement of the sun, the sunrise, sunset. Okay. So, uh, um, okay. So during during the time of Moses, I believe there is an eclipse, or there might uh, most likely be even a blood moon. Okay, but the Bible didn't describe it, so we're hung on that. Some scientists might, through astronomy, they can trace it back. So for sure, there will be there was a, an eclipse since it was nighttime. That is a lunar eclipse. During the time of Christ, that's a solar eclipse. The sun was there. That's light. Okay. During the book of in, in Revelation, the sun will be darkened. So there's a daytime side and there's the nighttime side. Everything will turn black, <laughs> dark black. What does that represent? Okay. So, any more questions? I hope you can. If you're listening on this broadcast, I hope you can tell your your mother, grandfather, grandmother, and even cousins to listen. Even ask Theo about this. Okay. So, they should be listening to this topic. They should not use the excuse. They don't know English. They, you can speak English if there's work. <laughs> you will suddenly become good in English if there's work. Okay, so uh, in school or in work. Uh, so, uh, Brother Joshua, but JP is no longer here. No? Sister Beverly, or if Brother Enoch is listening, try to ask some questions of what was mentioned a while ago. Okay. Uh, Brother Simon, you should rotate other pictures of your. I is that the, all your pictures about the solar eclipse? Let's rotate all the pictures that we've discussed to re, for them to review. So I also need to review. I need to uh, recapitulate everything that was said. So I hope you try to make questions. Because you don't strive to make questions, you will not strive. Okay, that's a good picture. You should have shown this a while ago. You see the 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 new moon. That's a total total solar eclipse. The full moon. That means the moon is not yet eclipsed. Then suddenly the moon will be eclipsed as it rotates, as it's partially being covered up. A total lunar eclipse means the full moon will become black. Okay, will not even be yeah, red. Okay, question, please. Please, who's this? Uh, uh brother Magellan. We have five minutes to go. Okay, so, please ask the moon, the question. Could the moon represent the lives of the believers? Yes. And yes. The, the, uh, the believers. What? Yes. Yes. What? Uh, as the church ages represents also the life of the life of the believer, so the moon also represents us, our life. There's darkness, there's light, there's we there's a nighttime and there's a daytime. Okay. So uh, it, it it does not only represent the church; it also represents the phases of our lives. The church. The seven churches in Asia represent different kinds of Christians. It also represents stages of a believer. So as the moon and the sun represent that journey, I say that journey of light and darkness, we are also on a journey. Our life here on earth is a journey. We, we are strangers in the land. We're just passing through. We're like the Israelites passing through the desert. They had 40 years, we have our lifetime. 
upon our death or upon our resurrection or uh, uh, during that day of resurrection, that's the end of your journey. Okay? So, if we die in advance and there's no resurrection yet, we're sleeping. That could also represent temporary darkness. Okay? When Christ rose from the dead, you seeing the Shroud of Turin, you need radiation light in order to imprint the photograph, the very first photograph, God, that it was made by God, not made by man. And it was the photograph of his son, <laughs> of his son, not anyone. You see, you see the importance, the significance, the same thing here. So it's also for us. So, of course, it was dark in the cave. It was blackened out, but you'd need light to imprint the photograph in the shroud, in the cloth. Imagine your, your negative is in the cloth, not some uh, film that you buy in the store. Okay. So for, suddenly the cave there was light. Okay. Other questions? Rotate the picture. Uh, the sun, S U N. Yes. Type, oh, I forgot uh, to mention the verse. Well, Brother Branham quoted, uh, explained this. Uh, uh, he quoted the verse that the sun rise in your hearts. Okay. The day star rise in your hearts. That wording in Peter is also represented as the, is represented by this eclipse, the journey of the sun and the moon, and even Brother Branham changed the S U N into S O N, and he's showing the spiritual side of it, that Christ, the, uh, uh, his name is Jesus, okay, um, when he's a Christ, of course, it could be any Messiah, Jesus Christ. The, son, the, the, the begotten or the firstborn son of God, he is that our son. He is our daylight. Oh, let's compare that to the uh, Baal worship. They only worship the sun physically. But don't, they don't have a revelation. The sun was put there by God to represent Jesus Christ, the son of God. Okay, continue with your question. One minute to so, go. Uh, this is a question that uh, if the moon, uh, the moon is the reflection of the sun. If the moon reflection. Is the reflection, of, uh, reflection so the moon the sun, represents the law, the, represents the typology. Yes, yes. By the way, so the, the moon is, if the moon is representing the believers, if the believers, believers receive Christ, then he is the reflection of the sun. The believers will also shine like the sun. If you read in Revelation chapter 12, the woman was clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet. Uh, my pastor, of course, our, our previous churches would interpret that uh, uh, the moon represents the law, the sun represents the fulfillment of the light. I, I could add uh, progressively that the moon also represents the type and shadows, the foreshadowings. And the anti-type, uh, the ultimate re reality of the foreshadowing is uh, the light of the sun. So the, when we are studying this type and shadows, we're, we're talking about the moon. We need someone to interpret, to explain, so that it will become the sun. It will, be, it will shine on our soul, this revelation. So that's the type of that, okay? So if there's a travel, eclipse, there's a... There's a gradual. We need to con continue the travel, complete our journey. Okay, our time is up. Uh, could you give us a closing prayer, Bar Magellan? Heavenly Father, thank you this morning that you've given to us the, the revelation that we uh, expressed this morning. May the light of your word or shine into those who hear this uh, revelation. Bless them, Lord, and, and this word will be manifest in our lives, in their lives, Lord, that uh, the risen Lord, as uh, a shining light, we will also shining uh, to the world as the representation of Christ. This is what I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Okay. Hope they can testify this in uh, even that evening. Talk about it. Okay. 